And visualizing for learning is something that we don't really talk about a lot. And we seem to think that everybody does it. And so it's um, sort of a neglected area, I think, there, where it would be really helpful if really young children were introduced to their own mental imagery and their own ability to visualize. So we have to remember a lot of stuff in life. And for the first thing we have to do is be able to remember our parents. And that's, uh, that happens about six weeks old when the health visitor asks you whether your child smiles at you. And you, um, if you reply with yes in the affirmative, then we know that they've already got a picture of you in, your, in their heads. And if you are wearing a pink curly wig, they'd probably cry. So really young, we can already remember stuff. We can then remember our favorite toys. We can spot um, our toys from somebody else's toys. Um, we can spot strangers. Um, and how did we learn to walk? We looked at other people and then we kept a copy of that in our heads. And then we tried to, um, to copy what they were doing. How do you recognize your house? So when you get a bit older and you're walking down the street, how do you know which is your house? and which is somebody else's. Um, you've got a picture in your head. And you may have past, that typo there, you may have past memories of things like holidays and Christmas and friends and family. So there's lots of things. If you ask somebody if they can remember last, last holiday, they quite often can in great detail. And how are they remembering that? They're remembering it through the pictures they're retaining in their head. And of course, if you've got a camera and you take a load of pictures, that only adds to improving that way. Um, and if you want to find your way home when you're a bit older, then you need to do that by remembering where you turn right, where you turn left, where you get off the bus, whatever. Then, of course, when you get a little bit older, um, when you're in primary school, there's lots more stuff to remember in school. And that's got... Um, anything. Um, there's literacy, which I talk about um, often is about visualizing letters and words for reading and spelling. There's numeracy, which is um, visualizing numbers, times tables, equations, mental arithmetic. But this all happens, this all can happen under the age of seven. So it's really important that parents and teachers know about this. Um, when you're in school, you've got to start finding your way around. And You've got to be able to start remembering what you read so that you can answer questions about it. And of course, it'd be nice if you could recognize your friends so that when you go into school every day, it's not a complete surprise who you're with. You're with people you know. And how do you know that? It's because you've got mental images of them in your head. And so uh, the next, and so there's lots of little pictures there in the corner of things that you might hold in your mental imagery including dragons and all oh, strange bunny rabbits. You get on to secondary school, and then there's more stuff to remember. There's things like biology and anatomy. And by the way, I do love the Dorian Kinsley books, which um, explain how things work, because those are nearly always visual with, sort of, with little explanations as in your speech bubbles as to what's going on where, especially in the human body. There's geography, um, there's things like maps and volcanoes uh, that are really easy to remember visually. In history, there's things like dates, kings and queens, there's battles, there's what went on in battles, there's all sorts of things like that. And of course, it's in design technology when you're wanting to design your new lampshade or your new bicycle or whatever it is. So you need to be able to know what it's going to look like in the end. And of course, everything in art um, is, there's either, it, there's two things in art. There's either you can draw a picture of something you already can see in front of you, or you can copy down somebody else's interpretation of it, or challenge if you can make up a brand new picture, like some of those ones uh, a couple of slides back, where they got um, volcanoes and, strange strange animals and stuff like that so you can make up your own ones then we come on to sports and hobbies well there's many more things to do there in sport how do you do it um, i remember when i was a kid being taught that how how footballers score goals they visualize the back of the net 
moving before they kick the ball. So it's really important they've got the skill to visualize. Um, they, they can visualize success. They can visualize when they're running, the breaking the tape so that they come in first. They can visualize remembering favorite players uh, in, in their football team. And interestingly, they've got favorite players. And if you turn around one of your favorite football players, they've got their name written on the back and they've got their number written on the back. So you can start visualizing words and numbers. There's all sorts of sports like pole vaulting is the most incredibly complicated thing to um, visualize. If you just think they've got to get a pole, they've got to pick it up, they've got to get a certain amount of strides down the runway, they've got to plant it in the place at the bottom, they've then got to almost climb up the pole over the top and then down again. So pole vaulting is an unbelievable uh, example of having great visual memory. Long jumps more or less the same, or especially the triple jump. Golf, of course, you know where the golf the ball's going down the fairway, um, and with a bit of luck, it'll go there. Soccer, as I said, um, visualizing where the ball goes in the back of the net. Um, taking things apart and putting them back together again. There's a most hobbies have got some elements of that. Is that you want to take your bicycle apart and put it back together again, or you take your motor car apart and put it back together again. And you've got to have a picture of how it all fits in together. And copying an expert is a great thing to do. Um, these couple of um, examples here, one of them is the uh, probably the martial arts at the bottom there. And I talked to a, martial, a guy who teaches martial arts once, and he said, it's a bit like chess for the feet. So you know where that you know where you're going to hit them there, and they know where they're going to hit you there, and so um, it's you've got a great visual visual skills. Um, of course, when you get to being an adult and you've got to have a, a job in life, you might have various adult occupations like problem solving and creativity, invariably done visually. Medicine, how do you do things? You know, how do you do operations? How do you do even simple things like blood tests? You're likely to have a visual image of those. There's lots of engineering stuff which is done visually. There's loads of design stuff and creativity. The list is absolutely endless. And I'll just do a few sports and hobbies. Art, painting from memory, dogs, cats, hobbies. Oh, I said motor cars. IKEA furniture, putting IKEA furniture together without the instructions is a really interesting visual skill. Lots of people can just know what it looks like and then just put it together. Other people have to go through the instructions bit by bit. Dressmaking and sewing, um, to another ones. Um, if you know what it's going to look like, you stand a much better chance. There's a program on the TV at the moment about uh, a competition for uh, dressmaking. And they've all got great visual images of what it's going to look like. And of course, gardening, recognizing plants and garden design. Garden design is the most amazing thing, if you think about it, because not only can they look at a, a, um, a garden and imagine what it's going to look like when they've done whatever they want to to it, they also can imagine what it's going to look like in a few years as the plants grow up. And so just amazing. And if some people haven't, some people find it quite difficult. And I'm always very prepared to help anybody to try and improve their mental imagery because it's got so many applications. Right, um, Simon's comments. I'm always fascinated by the immense power of visualizing success. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, we could say that if you visualize failure, then you're likely to get that. And visualizing success is, um, is just really important. And even if it's mundane things like visual, if you're making, you're making a cake and visualizing what it's going to look like and how it's going to be, um, yeah, or what the end result is going to be like. I once asked Jamie Oliver when he was cooking whether he knew what um, the dish was going to look like when he finished. And he, I, he looked at me aghast and went, do you think I don't? And so definitely you can visualize anything to do with um, uh, your hobbies of cooking or whatever. Some of the questions, I'll just give you a couple of the questions I get. I can't visualize. 
that's one of the really familiar ones. Um, I can't visualize is um, normally something to do with your uh, just your imagination of what visualizing is going to be like. For example, you some people have glorious 36 inch color television pictures that they can visualize. Some people have black and white. Some people have just sort of know what something looks like. Some people have got cartoons. So if I say to you, picture a cat, then you're, they may go into Garfield. So they've got cartoons. All of those are right. And it's just a question of how, how much you're using your visualization skills. So don't worry about it. Just do it. Just use it for, and the more you use it, the more you will develop it. I did a class this morning, which I'm going to re-record, which was about visualizing when you're reading so that you can remember what you read. Uh, that's another really useful skill. And if you can't remember what you read, then I do recommend you have a look at that one when I've re-recorded it. Um, Andrea said, I think I was so much more visual as a child. I could write stories, etc. Could any, could you lose this ability and why? I think it's one of those things that if you don't lose, use it, then you might well lose it. Um, if you're habitually visualizing, if you think of a child who is extremely artistic, who's, I've got, we've got one client at the moment who's habitually now, since I was talk, talking to him, and sort of introducing him to his mental imagery. He is now obsessively drawing cartoons continuously. Um, he wasn't doing that before the lockdown. Um, he was doing a bit of it, but not a lot of it. And what he's doing is now he's finding it so much fun, he's doing more and more and more. So I think you, the answer to you, Andrea, is just keep using it and do keep practicing. I've, during the lockdown, I personally have got into drawing cartoons. Um, some of the cartoons you see in my um, presentations are mine. Some of them was another lady who did them for me. And I just love doing cartoons now. I'm reading the Roald Dahl books and I'm doing um, some of the cartoons from there, from Prince and Blake's I'm copying out of his. Some of them I'm making up my own new ones. And I'm absolutely loving it. It's just a fascinating, area to explore and the more you do it the better you get at it one of the things that some people say to me is their um their mental images are much better than they can produce on paper well that's okay too um the people with very very good mental images um you know 36 inch color tvs um have got fabulous mental images and when they try and draw them quite often they're not quite as good and so they get a bit depressed about that and say, oh, I can't draw. But actually, they're the people that have got the fabulous images in their head already. And it just takes practice to get them out. And there's some great books around at the moment about teaching people how to do cartooning and stuff like that. I do recommend things like that. Another thing you might like to consider is that if you think you can't visualize, then just consider what you do when you're dreaming. Uh, because quite often people can have amazing mental images when they're dreaming, but they don't necessarily uh, try using them when they're awake. So thank you all for calling.